Welcome back, everyone. Paul Chamberlain, the Air Force guy, here with Everything RV's podcast. And the purpose of this podcast is to bring you all the information that you need so that you can go out and make memories that last a lifetime. Now, this podcast is being sponsored by Extreme Heaters. I'll have more information about that here uh, briefly through the podcast. So do stay tuned because I'm going to be talking about today the top items that you need to have a successful camping trip. Uh, these are some pretty important parts and the last few are very critical also. So do stay tuned through all of them. By the way, I'll have a link for all these down below the video, down below this podcast. If you're listening on, um, if you're listening on any um, streaming services now, with the youtube channel and watching it on video you will actually be seeing the products that i'm actually sharing with you uh if at any time you have any questions about any of these products feel free to reach out to me just put a comment down below but let's get started so one of the first things you're going to definitely need i'm going to go ahead and start some sharing some screens here is you are definitely going to need to have as you can see here a toilet chemical. Now, the one that I recommend is liquefied. Now, you go on here and you can order these. Uh, I'll have an Amazon link for this. So you're actually be able to get the best deal out there. But this is one of the best products out there. You know, there are so many different products that are out there, but the problem is having one that's going to actually do its job. And this one will actually do its job. So I want you to keep that in mind when you're going to pick out, um, when you're going to go ahead and pick out a um, a toilet chemical. Next thing I want to talk to you about, and this is very critical as well, is having yourself a surge protector and not just any type surge protector, folks. There is a big difference out there. Now, I'm going to share with you two here this evening. Um, this one here is a progressive industries. Uh, this is a American made product. The difference between a surge protector and what they call a EMS surge protector is huge. Do not go get yourself a surge protector and don't sit there and think that you're going to have, you're going to go ahead and be able to get by with one of those cheapies that are out there because you're not. If it's costing you $100 or less, it's probably not going to work very well for you. So keep that in mind. Watchdog is another one. Nice thing with the watchdog is the fact that you can get this Bluetooth to your phone so you can actually see what's happening. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're getting 30 or 50 amp. They have them. Um, You're going to spend over $200 or more for a good surge protector. Now, these the ones that I'm showing you here, these are portable surge protectors, you can get them uh, hardwired into your camper so you don't have to worry about them walking away. So that's a couple of them. Next, let's talk about, because this is another critical thing that I talk about with people, and that is to have some wood so that you can get the tires off of something. Now, I do this, you you may want to just do this for when you're parking your camper, uh, maybe not doing it when you're um, going to a campground, but just to get the tires off of the ground. Now, what I do is I carry, you want pressure treated. I carry two, they're two inch thick by 12 inches wide, six feet long. That just makes it very easy for me to go ahead and, um, to do that. Next thing we're going to be talking about, just when I'm, I'm going down the line here. In the event that you are going to be relying on power, you may want to consider getting yourself a generator. Now, this one's just a little 2,500, and I'm going to share with you something else. Stay tuned because it's going to be at the end with this. uh, That so that that way there, if you have um, an air conditioner, you can actually run an air conditioner with this generator. Now, if you don't want to have to worry about how much um, the power and so forth, you can get the own, and by the way, that's an Onan generator. You can get an Onan, uh, generator 
that is a 4,500 that will actually have a 30 amp plug on it. Plus it's going to have a couple of 20, 20 amp plugs on it as well. But these things are very quiet and they're very affordable. I believe this one here is right around, I think right around $1,200. The other one was uh, just under $700. Now there is a difference when you're looking at generators. And the difference is this. They do have the flex fuel ones out there, but understand that if you're living in higher altitudes, you lose more power if you have um, if you're using one that is using propane versus gasoline. So keep that in mind if and when you decide you want to get yourself a generator. Weight's another issue. There's a lot of different things that are some things you want to consider. Now, of course, you're going to want to keep comfortable out there, right? So highly recommend that you get yourself a good chair. Now they make, by the way, if, if you're putting these links, if you're linking to these links that I'm sending you, they're going to go right to Amazon. They're going to have all kinds of different chairs. Look and see what's going to fit for you. I have a chair that's like this one. I like it. It's a little bit higher on the back. Some of these, they have a low back and I, they're just not comfortable for me. And I like to have a little tr uh, tray table and the little pockets on the side. Makes a Makes a big, big difference for me, you know? So keep that in mind and find a chair that works for you. I mean, they actually have a chair, which I thought was pretty cool. Let me just pull this one up here because I thought this was really kind of cool here. And it's, uh, oh, let me see if I got it, got it, got it, got it here. And see, but anyway, it was, um, it's a taller chair. So again, I'll have all these links down below. You just go ahead and check it out figure out what's going to work for you, but let's get on to the next one. Okay. So next, what we want to do is very important for you to have a water hose. Now, one thing I talk about with the water hose is this, you are probably better off getting two 25s or for some people you can get a 10 footer and have a 25 footer. And here's the reason why, because we're going to talk about water filters, but you, uh, there's sometimes, um, I carry I carry a mul multitude of, of different water hose. I have two 25s and I have a 10. And the reason for that is because I'm taking and I'm hooking up um, the water pressure regulator, which you're going to also need uh, to the spigot. Then I'm hooking a, sometimes I'm hooking a hose to that because then I'm putting a wa wa um, water filtration system and then I'm taking a hose on the other side of that. So now something else you're going to want to consider, and that is going to be what we call a 45. Now there's two different things you can do. I like using the 45s when it's on my camper. And then they have this thing called a 90 degree. And I'll typically have to use that sometimes uh, when, when you're at, um, when you are at a, um, where the water spigot is, it makes it kind of, it makes it kind of difficult for you to go ahead and use um, a 45 and you've got to go ahead and get a 90. Now with the 90s, what I like is I like having the ones with the shutoff valve because there's sometimes that we need, you know, I need to go ahead and shut it off or whatever, just makes it easier. Now you could also get yourself, if you didn't want to get the, the 90 with the shutoff, you can get, they have these little Ys with the shutoff. And the reason why I typically have a Y is so that way there I can have a separate hose hooked up while I am um, at the campground. That way there, if I need to use the water hose to rinse off the concrete pad, wash the car, maybe clean the camper, whatever the case may be, I have that hose. I don't have to worry about disconnecting and so forth. I know most campers have these outside sprayer ports. I just, I just never uh, like using mine. I just use a separate hose. So. Just another little something to help you out there. Now, everyone wants to have some type of clean water when you're out camping, right? Well, there's two different ways that you can go about um, filtering your water. You can go and just use the, what we call the, um, let me find it. You can get one that is the high-end one if you wanted to, or you can go the cheap route. 
it just depends on how you, how you want to do it. To me, I'm just trying to filter the water. So that's a more expensive one if you wanted to do that. Or they have the less expensive one. And what that does, that's just an inline one. And I like buying these also because of that spring-loaded um, hose bit right there. I like to get a couple of those because typically I'm using one of those on the camper and then sometimes I got to use the other one at the spigot because of the way maybe it's doing. But, you know, if you use a, get yourself a couple 45s, a couple 90s, I think you're going to be fine with everything with that. So that's what the, with the water filtration system, these, this water out here isn't going to be the best, something else that you may want to consider getting you and is what we call a, so a water softener. I mean, because water at these campgrounds, because most of them are on wells, they're pretty hard water. And boy, do they create havoc on your water heater and systems. So just uh, do your homework and figure out what's going to work best for you. I am excited to have Extreme Heaters as a sponsor for my podcast. Here is why I have partnered with them. At Extreme Heaters, they are dedicated to being your go-to experts in freeze protection products. When harsh winter hits, they've got your back with dependable solutions that give you true peace of mind. But they don't stop there. They're always working to enhance and broaden their product lineup to better serve your evolving needs, whether it be in current markets or new ones. They believe in exceeding your expectations and building trust that lasts for the long haul. Your comfort and confidence in choosing them means everything. That's why their products come with a rock solid warranty because they stand behind quality and durability. Then when you need assistance, their friendly customer service support team is there for you every step of the way. Ensuring complete satisfaction is the goal and they won't stop until it's achieved. Extreme Heaters is built to be the best. Now to take advantage of this extraordinary discount, act now using the link and discount code below. Then be sure to tell your story and give Extreme Heaters your five-star review. Let's keep making memories that last a lifetime. So now, some other things. There are a few other things that you need that are very important. Now, depending on whether or not you are going to be camping in cold weather, something you may want to consider is a heated water hose. Because I'll tell you right now, you know, it's getting pretty cold out there. And I'll tell you, the showers get to be uh, much quicker because with that cold weather out there, it makes it very, very tough to take a warm shower. That's for sure. So a uh, heated water hose is something uh, that would be very beneficial. Now, for those of you that have a fifth wheel, it's nice to go ahead and be able to make sure that somebody isn't running away with it. So don't skimp on doing a lock for that king, kingpin. Uh, that would be for the um, for a fifth wheel, for the kingpin, or the pin box, whatever you want to call it. And then the other thing you have is if you have a travel trailer, then, of course, you have the one that goes over the uh, front of the tongue. Take a look at what you're buying. These are rather expensive, but I can tell you those cheap ones out there, I had a customer of mine uh, had a cheap one on there as they lost the key. And they asked me to, you know, I happen to be in the area. They asked me if I could help them out. I said, you know, if you don't mind us drilling out the lock. And that's what we did. We drilled that. Took us about 30 seconds. Boom, it comes right off. Understand a lock. It's there to keep the honest people honest. If somebody wants your camper, they're going to take it. Keep that in mind. Um, the uh, reversible mats. For your camp, for your campsite, I'll tell you right now. I mean, I have the largest one. Some people tell you, "Oh, you want to keep it underneath your awning um, because you don't want the water get on it." I I'm sorry. To me, especially if it's in dirt, I want to go ahead and make sure that I have more ground covered. I really don't care if it gets wet. These things are light; they're mold, mold and mildew resistance resisted, so it works out just fine. Uh, but that's. You will, you will thank yourself for, for getting one of those. That's for sure. Now, as far as for your stabilizers, in the event that you have a 
travel trailer with stabilizers. These easy blocks are wonderful. Now, the other way you could do it, the nice thing about having these is it's lightweight. I carry a bunch of six by sixes with me, a little bit heavier, right? But it just depends on how you want, how you want to make your job. If you want to make it kind of easy, these things are light and easy. They also have the ones, and you're probably going to want one of these if you have for your tongue jack, or again, have a couple of, um, have a couple of, um, six by sixes to put under it, but these jack blocks. Now these also are great for fifth wheels for their um, leveling system and so forth. Uh, again, it's all about trying to make things, make it as quick and easy for you to go ahead and get things set up at when you get to your campground, right? Now you're also going to need to have a sewer hose. We talked about water hose. You're going to want to have a sewer hose. Now, you may want to consider getting yourself a 10-foot and a 20-foot, depending on the length of your camper, and also whether or not you have two different discharges. Because if you have two different discharges, you're going to want to have a Y and hook them together and put it into the dump area. Be careful when you're buying something. Make sure that it's going to fit, that it's universal, because there's some brands out there not going to mention them, but they are not universal and you can't hook them together with other brands. So make sure you check that stuff out and uh, before you buy. That's very important. Uh, be, you'll be thankful that you that you did that. That's for sure. Something very important is trying to get yourself leveled um, when you are camping. And this is a very good system that they have. And they have, listen, they have Anderson. There's a lot of different ones out there, but it makes it very simple for you because all you've got to do is run the tires over. It's going to correct it one to like four or five inches, which makes it perfect. Um, also, for those of you that have fifth wheels, you don't want the tires off the ground. You could use these. The nice thing with the fifth wheel, if you have the leveling system, you get it leveled, the tires are off the ground. You can just lift whatever side's off the ground, slide these under, and bring it back down. Makes it real simple for you. Now, next thing you're going to need to have, be, you know, because obviously you're going to want to make sure that you um, have your vehicle stable, that it's not running away. There's two different types of chalks that I recommend. One is the rubber chalks, and the other is the X chalks that go in between the tires. You want, if you're going to do one, I would highly recommend you use these because the problem with the X chalks, and I ran into this with somebody in a fifth wheel, they just had the X chalks in it. They didn't have um, chalks behind the tires. And when they were trying to hook up to the fifth wheel, it pushed it back. And that creates some issues. If you have the chalks on it, that'll keep it in place. Um, the main thing that the reason why you want to have chalks is because the fact that you want the uh, tires, you want to keep the tires from moving. And the best way to do it is when you get put into the, when you get into your camping spot and you know where you're, you're about where you want to be, put two behind, one behind each tire. And by the way, you want four, even if you only have one axle, you want tires on both, you want chalks on both wheels. Uh, but put them behind it and back up hard against it. And then while you're holding your brake, uh, if you're the only person, put the parking brake on, then go out and put the ones in the front because the tires are typically a little warm. And the more you can wedge them, the less movement you're going to get in your camper and keeps it from moving on you. Something else you're going to need, which is very important. And that is you're going to want to have possibly something for your sewer hose to keep it so that it's level. Well, not level, but so that it's gradually going down to the sewer where you're dumping it. Now I can tell you that when I was camping just um, for weekends, I didn't worry about that because to me, I'd rather just much rather just walk the hose and be done with it when I was done, because that's just added stuff you got to bring in and put out. So figure out how you're going to be camping and which, what's going to work best for you. Uh, I use it now because of the fact that uh, I'm in my, in my camper all the time. And it does make a huge difference. 
Okay, for those of you that maybe you've been in, maybe you've had an RV before, um, or even those that maybe aren't going to be getting one, this next, these next three items have some really good importance here. There are a lot of people that want to go ahead and run an air conditioner while they're plugged in at the house. There's a couple things you got to keep in mind. Now, what this is going to be, and keep in mind when you're running something at the house, you got to make sure you have enough, enough amperage coming from it. This next product that I'm going to be talking about, and by the way, I'm actually interviewing, if you come back on Monday, I'm actually interviewing the owner of this company, and we're going to go into more detail on this. But what this is, everybody has probably heard of, or maybe you haven't, a soft start for an air conditioner. What this is, this is a portable type soft start that you're just going to plug into power. So you're able to go ahead and plug into 30 amp, or even if you want to plug in at the house, you've got a chance that, because they have another adapter that can adapt it down to it, that you can go ahead and possibly run your air conditioner. Now, the reason why I say possibly is because there's a lot of variables if you're on a 20 amp service. And that is whether or not you have 20 amps available. You really only need about 15 amps for most air conditioners. Most air conditioners are going to be between run between 12 to 14 amps of power. But what the problem is, is on their initial startup is when they could be double, triple, even four times that amount of power. That is the reason why that soft start is so important. The next, so keep keep in mind, I got to, I'll have links for these down below and um, you can take advantage of their discounts and all that good stuff. Next thing we're going to talk about is for quality air in your camper. I can tell you, uh, it, I'm excited about this because I actually have these um, and I'm actually going to be installing the one. But let me let me just show you something. So this is called Airlock. And this is for the ultimate in air quality for your camper. And what this, there's two different products. This one is just standalone. You just plug it in to 110 and it's like a little fan but what it's doing is it's it is cleaning out the air and this has been doing a, a pretty good job i'll tell you the odors are not like they used to be um before i had that now i'm really excited because next week i'm going to be getting this installed on my air conditioner and then that's when it's going to really matter because that actually does more airflow and that way there, it'll do it. But what they do is it's an ionizer. You're putting it as the air goes by these two brushes here. However it works, I have no idea, but I need to plug it into power and it works. This is a company that has been around for quite some time now. They're just getting into the RV industry, but they've been in the boat business doing it in boats. And so you can imagine if this can eliminate odors on boats, it's going to be simple in the um in the rv business the only thing i'm trying to figure out thank goodness i got an uh electrician coming over is you know when they send these it's set up to be connected to a boat air conditioner um and so i'm looking at it thinking well you know i'm thinking i might be able to do it but ac's in an rv are a, heck of a lot different so thank goodness i have a, a air a, electrician coming over to go ahead and take that take care of that now so then that's the one thing. Now, the next thing is, let me show you. You know, they always say you save the, the best for last, right? And this is for those of you that may be camping in extreme weather. This is something I'd highly re recommend that you take a look at. These are extreme heaters. This is something that started ten, over 10 years ago in the boating industry and has now transitioning over into the RV industry. And I found out about this from a customer of mine. And basically he was camping up in upstate New York last October. He got one of these, he put it underneath his camper, skirted it just with that, you know, that uh, silver like bubble wrap type insulation you see at Lowe's and Home Depot. He just got some cinder blocks to lay across them, folded up, taped it to his uh, camper 
and he did that. He went, he saved himself. He was using half the amount of propane as before by using this underneath. And then, of course, he was using an electric heater as well as propane on the inside. He went from keeping it at 55 degrees inside to 65 degrees. But, you know, he was up in, it was in the, the low single digits up there in upstate New York. And it was not a four season camper, but it did. He didn't have one bit of trouble because of that. Uh, and there's a lot more stories out there about that. But listen, I hope you enjoyed the information I gave you here today. Um, let me know uh, what you thought of the information. What do you thought? Is there something that something else that you would recommend? I'm sure I missed a couple things. Um, I, yeah, I matter of fact, I know I miss, missed a swivel stick because I don't use black tank rinses. But listen, I'll have all these links down below and uh, check them out. And by the way, this one here, they have a discount for this one here as well. They don't normally give discounts, but use the Air Force guy for your discount code and you will get a, a discount. So uh, any discount is a great discount, but I appreciate you watching. And I'll be oh, and listening as well out there on that streaming services. But uh, I'll be back at you again next week. Same time, same bad channel. Take care.